Awesome. Okay, so welcome to this Hyper Lecture Sweden meetup. My name is Roland and I'm happy to be your guest for today's session. And uh, today we will have a session about Node.js. So the title is how to use Node.js for Hyperledger framework application development. And in the session, I will give you an overview uh, what we can do with Node.js and especially uh, regarding the cert uh, Hyperledger certified developer uh, ex exam. So this is resumed, this is closed for the moment, but it will be resumed uh, uh, in the middle of March. And that's the reason why I, I have uh, chosen this topic that we can see what we what is needed to uh, pass the exam maybe. So we can go a little bit through this um, curriculum and um, I will show you also how you can get started with with Node.js on the client side and also on the chain code side. And uh, yeah, so we can summarize this in with two pillars. So we can say we can use Node.js um, for application development for the chain code side. Mm -hmm. So there we have the different possibilities. So the first one is, um, is Go and then Node.js and uh, Java. This are, I think these are the stable versions. So. And on the client side, um, there is uh, Node.js and um, I think also Go, but that's not stable for the moment. However, there was an, a new version uh, one week or two weeks ago. Um, and um, the certification, uh, the certified Hyperledger uh, developer certification is uh, will be resumed and uh, but only in the language node.js so there is on this is available in for the chain code in node.js and for the uh, client side on node.js and that's the reason why I, I have chosen this topic today that we can have a starting point uh, to see how this will work and uh, how uh, and what we have to learn to pass the exam if someone uh, wants to uh, take take this exam um, in, in March or in April or to another time. And uh, yeah, so small overview, then I will give you a guideline uh, what is needed. And then I have uh, prepared uh, the, these domains and competences. And uh, so that you can have an overview of what is important. And uh, in the next and upcoming sessions, I will uh, talk a little bit more about this chain code and uh, uh, client development. So, and then I will pick some special parts. Today, I will give an overview, and I will use I will use the asset basic transfer example um, for that. So, because that's a good starting point, and for the chain code, and also for the client side. But on the client side, uh, the example is for me, or the official example is for me a little bit uh, difficult to understand. So, I have. Um, um, Splitted this example in a more easier way to understand uh, for me, and uh, then we can see um, how we can use this Node.js uh, example also on the client side. And yeah, so the references you can find here in the slides as well, and also all my uh, examples here you can find uh, in the GitHub repository. Um, yeah, short overview. So Node.js is can be used uh, for both for the chain code or smart contract development and also for the client side development. So um, for me, um, is it's a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, I think so. I came from the Go side um, on the for the chain code, and uh, but. Um, I think when you are a beginner and you come from a web development side, then this is a good choice to start. And um, in the in the, the Node.js 
uh, we have uh, this fabric contract API, and uh, this is a high level API. So you will, you, you will see a little bit later that we uh, can uh, make a chain code, uh, make some chain code operations with very less code. So and it's, I think it's, it's really easy to use this. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit surprising for me that it's so easy to use this Fabric uh, Contract API. And you have also uh, the possibility to use the, the old version or the, the, the shim or skin version. And uh, this is a little bit low level, so that means that you need more commands, and but you have more flexibility to do something. And uh, for this, uh, you have to use a Node.js version 12. And yeah, then you have to deploy it on, uh, on your peers. The deployment process is the same like for, your, for a Go chain code but uh, with some options that you have to name the, 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 the type of chain code for Golang, this is the default. And that's the reason why we normally don't uh, do this. So, but when we use uh, Node.js, then we have to use another option to flag uh, this, that uh, the process now that we use uh, in Node.js for this. And then, but the process and the version uh, 2.2, Fabric 2.2 is the same. So with the uh, installation, with the proof process, and also with the commit uh, in the end. So, and then we can use uh, the Node.js uh, Node as a chain code. And on the other side, we can use it more naturally, I think, for the client application development. And uh, the end here is uh, to build a REST API. So I think that's the, the normal way, but you can also use a command line um, or you can create a command line program like we are going uh, to do today so that we can call the commands from the, from the terminal. And, uh, but I think when you use it in a web environment, then we have to use a REST API and uh, then we need an Express.js server, for example, or something similar to uh, create this API server. And then uh, we have a client on this, so and then we can use uh, any front-end application, Angular, Vue.js, React, uh, whatever you want to uh, have an, a nice uh, front-end for your browser interface. And uh, yeah, so, but that's, uh, front side, client front side web development. So that's a little bit out of the scope here. Uh, and uh, we have here, that's the aim uh, to deploy an API, uh, to create an API that can that we can use. And that's normally a REST API. And uh, for this, is, this we have a so-called uh, application SDK, software development kit. So, and uh, on the smart contract side, we have an API, so an application program programming interface. So yeah, they are from, from the term to differences. And uh, here we have uh, uh, also NPM packages. So uh, we have to use Node.js uses NPM uh, normally uh, for his package management. And we, we need some external dependencies. Um, we need here the fabric chain code uh, node uh, NPM package, and uh, on the client side, the Fabric network or the Fabric CA client, for example, uh, and there are some some others as well. And here we can use uh, the version 10 and 12. So from the Node.js version, when we uh, when we have to to um, deploy or your your or create an, uh, an environment or so in development environment, then uh, it's uh, when, we, when we make this both the, the Node.js, um, the chain code and, and also the client application, then I think we should use Node.js 12. Then, and in this way, we don't have to switch between uh, 10 and 12 D versions, uh, but we can do this on the, on, the, on the client side, but I think it's better when we use uh, the same version, uh, it's easier uh, to work, I think. And uh, with, this, with this software development kit, we can create an um, application, a client application, which can interact with the, uh, with the blockchain system 
and can uh, invoke and query some data. So, and these are the global steps we have to do. And we look a little bit deeper what we have to do. And then we can say uh, for the smart contract, uh, we need um, a development environment for local testing for this, for the creation process of the chain code. And there we can, and for this, we can use the peer dev mode. Um, this is uh, the environment which we have seen in the last meetup. So we can use also the native version or the, the binary version or the Docker version for this. And then we can uh, deploy the chain code uh, and we upgrade the chain code um, on the peers. So yeah, that's also once the one interesting step. So in mostly we see the deployment of a chain code. So we have a chain code and then we deploy it and then we use it. But uh, what is the upgrade process? So, and uh, that's also an interesting part when we upgrade, when we try to upgrade the chain code. So you can uh, develop and then we can deploy the chain code on the peers and then also on the, um, the upgrade the chain code. And for the client development, it's a little bit different. So for the client application, so we need, I think it's better to have a small test network, something like the test network for neophobic samples, because we need um, uh, to prepare a connection profile. So this, the connection profile is responsible for the connection to the, to the peer. And, uh, and, uh, we need also some uh, identity. So we need a user uh, which is allowed to interact with the network. And uh, we have to prepare it. And that means that we have to um, enroll and register, register and enroll a user for this client development. And uh, this process uh, could also be done with the Node.js. And uh, in, this, in this field, we have two possibilities. So we can use an existing identity um, and uh, then convert this existing identity in the local wallet from the client application, or we can uh, register and enroll a new user. But for this, uh, we need a running certified authority. So, but the test network will help us with that. So when we install a um, different network, the test net network from the user side, uh, per default two users uh, in every organization will be created. So we have an admin user. This is the user which we normally use for our testing and for the installation of the chain code and for the administrator uh, part. And then we have a user which is called user one. And this is a normal user and we can convert this normal user uh, as well to a wallet, to an, to an identity, which we, which we can use in the client application. And uh, for when we choose this path, then we don't need the Fabric CI for testing. But when we want uh, to create um, a new user or a different users, then uh, it's uh, better to use the certified authority option. And that's the good, thing I think uh, the mo in the version 2.2 and in the test network in the net in the test network from 2.2 because it's very easy to start a test network with certified authorities uh, because it's only a flag to do this and and uh, then we have a running um, network with two certified authorities uh, one for organization one and one for organization two. And this step is a little bit complicated in the version 1.4. So because the test network where you build your first network example um, hasn't, uh, hasn't this uh, possibility to easy start and certified authority. And th that's the reason why I think it's, uh, this is a good improvement also for uh, the testing and uh, learning and development. And we can easily start and certified authority, and then we can en register and enroll some identities. But we have to use the Node.js SDK for that, and we have to write uh, a script or something like that to uh, that we can do this. And then when we have this in place, then we can write the application. So, so for, for 
that means that we cannot start um, and say, okay, we write now an, an fabric application. So we need some preparation. And uh, I think we should use for that the test network because uh, we can have any configuration what we want. So also we can use a uh, CouchDB, for example. So when it comes to which queries, when we have a chain code where which queries is used uh, or um, some aggregation functions or whatever CouchDB uh, offers to, to use, um, or we use the, 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 the uh, LabelDB as a state database. And in this case, we only can use um, some key queries, uh, key range queries or composite keys. And, but it's also okay, but it depends on the use case. But we can all, we handle all this, um, we can handle all these scenarios uh, with the test network. And that's the reason why it's a good choice. And then we have to prepare this connection profile. And this connect, and uh, with this preparation of the connection profile, um, that, that the name, I think it's not, it's 100% uh, uh, correct because the test network has prepared this connection profile. Uh, but we have to read this connection profile in our application. And uh, that's the first step we have to do. So, and, but we have to prepare it for our um, Node.js application. And then we have to enroll the users or the um, identities for this. Yeah, so, and that's are the steps we would like uh, to do, we have to do. And uh, when it comes to this uh, uh, certification, uh, then here I have a copy of the um, domains and competences. And you can see uh, the most part here, 65% um, percent um, uh, about the chain code development. And uh, we can see here the competences we have to uh, have uh, to pass the exam. Um, and we say here uh, from the client application, identity management, instantiation, a wallet, import identities to a wallet and select and manage identity from a wallet. It's, it has only 7%. But I think it's an important step. Uh, but without this part, you will not have a possibility to connect to uh, your fabric network. So also the creation of the network, the connection profile is an important part. So, um, and uh, yeah, but the main part here is about the chain code development and uh, yeah, and not so much about the um, client application development, I think. So we have only here, in this two parts, small parts, also. and the most part is about the chain code development. And here we have 20% for maintenance and testing. So there are some uh, special topics here, uh, unit testing, for example, for contracts. So that's an interesting uh, part, but depends a little bit on the tools. So when you use Go, for example, then you have a good uh, testing environment because Go has uh, good testing features. Uh, in Node.js, you can also have good testing features. Um, yeah, so, but it depends a little bit then on the language you use. And uh, yeah, Troubles troubleshooting transaction flow is also, I think, important part uh, because um, as a developer, you have to understand um, how Fabric is working. And uh, that could be a little bit uh, difficult uh, to understand this, uh, how all the single piece uh, fits together. But normally um, from the um, whole perspective, from the global perspective, I think as a developer, uh, you can uh, use these tools uh, and the, the, the client application and the Node.js application, uh, the, the chain code, um, the Node.js and chain code. Um, and uh, in this way, you can create an application and you can install this application also on a managed system like an IBM or you can have on Google Cloud or on other public uh, cloud providers, they offer managed uh, fabric networks and then you can use it 
and uh, yeah, and install it. Um, and it's not so complicated as if you try to run your own uh, network. But this depends on the um, use case and uh, what is the aim of your project. But here you can see and uh, some some important parts we will see today. And uh, in the next sessions, I will pick some important other parts. For example, the event uh, the event part. Uh, this is also interesting to see re register and handle channel based events. And for example, so that we can see what is uh, when is a new block is created, or we can uh, send an email when the transaction is completed, or whatever. So uh, there are a lot of possibilities what we can do with that. So, and uh, yeah, and some uh, points we will see today here. So okay. There are some questions. Can anyone hear anything? Yeah, all good. So, welcome. It's old. Okay, complete one second. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So that's so for the introduction here. And um, I haven't uh, here the link for the um, for this for this official uh, domains and competence sheet, but uh, you can Google it and you will find it on the Linux Foundation page and um, and also some other useful informations. But um, I think it's important when you try to learn this, then you can uh, see this as a small guideline um, to uh, focus on different. Uh, um, aspects here, but because when you see here import uh, the wallet topic, then when you look at a little bit deeper onto the wallet topic, then you will see that we have three different kinds of wallets. So we can have a file wallet and in memory wallet and also a database wallet. And with this, we can create different combinations from applications. So, and uh, yeah, so we have here a lot of possibilities to do and to uh, develop some uh, thanks. Okay, so um, let's start with the practical part. So make this a little bit larger. And here. So today I use two terminals for that. So in the first terminal, we would like to run the test network and uh, we will install the, the train code. And in the second uh, test, in the second terminal here, we will create, we will test our Node.js application. And uh, when we try to start this, that's pretty straightforward. So the, there is no, no secret. So we use the test network again. And uh, here is the command. So we have here this network uh, network script, and with network up, we can create the channel. So and with the uh, C option, we can name the channel. And here, uh, this is new in our sessions. So with this option CA, we can create um, certified authorities and. Uh, for the network. So, and this network is, has two organizations and, uh, and we have uh, two certified authorities. And um, we can do this and then you will see you have, uh, we have three organizations. We have also the other organization and also for that and certified authority is created. In a normal scenario, you will have also for the TLS um, an own uh, cert certified authority, uh, but here is only for the other, the organization one and the organization uh, two. And, uh, and that's the good thing on this uh, Fabric 2.2 version. So because here we can create uh, any configuration which we need uh, 
and now it's Wendy, so I'm going to say Docker PS. And then you see here, we have here, this is, this is our normal setup. So we have the order and two uh, peers, uh, one for each organization. And here we have now two certified authorities uh, also running. But for example, we only need the uh, CA for organization one. But all three are running and uh, you can create uh, or you can use it also uh, when you make a client application uh, for the organization two, for example, then you can register a user also from this. And you can also, with this configuration, you can also learn a little bit about the Fabric CA. So that's also an interesting topic. So how we can um, register, enroll, and, uh, in, and uh, delete or remove uh, identities from this CA. And also when it comes to attribute paste um, uh, chain codes, so we can, we can uh, set some attributes to an identity. Uh, for example, this is the department uh, marketing or sales or whatever. And then we can use this information into the chain code to have permissions uh, on the chain code. So we can say uh, this uh, read process or this function can only use the from a user from the um, sales department, for example, or whatever. So we can set different uh, properties, uh, attributes to an identity, and then we can read it and can um, handle the situation in our uh, chain code. So, and now we have this in place and running. So, and then, yeah, so, and then we have to use the chain code. So, and in the favorite examples, we find different chain code examples for, uh, I think the, the asset transfer basic so has uh, um, for all supported languages. Oops. So, and you see here uh, a lot of examples. So all this, which is with the prefix uh, application. So that means for the client side, so we can have here the JavaScript version and uh, the chain code here with the, the folder folders with the chain code, they um, are for the, uh, for the chain code. So we have here in JavaScript, you have in TypeScript one, one version for Go and one for Java as well. And uh, yeah, we would like to look into this. And, um, and here we can see the chain code. So we can uh, look, here, look in this chain code. Yeah, so, and then here you have this chain code structure. So, um, the interesting part here is uh, we need an index.js file. And uh, we need here this lib folder. In this lib folder, we have the uh, chain code, uh, the chain code, for example. So, and you see here, um, this is the init function, yeah. And here's a create function. So we can move this a little bit. So, and that was the interesting part for me. So it's with the chain code, if with this con new contract API, um, it's really easy to create a chain code. Yeah, 
This is the Fabric Contract API implementation here. And uh, with uh, this is a uh, high level. So uh, when we say the create asset uh, function here, and uh, that's it. So we can have here, you can make here an object. Um, that's how you can, how you do it in Node.js. And then here you have this uh, put state. And uh, the only thing what you have to uh, do is that you create, uh, uh, you have to convert this asset here, this object here to, um, to, a strip, to, um, to a buffer, yeah, to a bytes array. And, uh, and that's it. So, and we have <laughs> two lines of code to create an asset. And I think that's really easy. And also the read function here. When you read an asset, yeah, you have, can also say, okay, that's the read, the get state. Yeah. So this is every, every time the same. So, uh, and you have a get state. Then you have an asset in the JSON format and then you can convert this. Uh, this is bytes, this is in byte. And it's, uh, I think that's wrong here. It's not JSON, it's, it's, a, it's byte. And with the two string, you convert this buffer uh, to uh, JSON. And that's it. And, and with this, I think so, okay, when you say this is the, the error, uh, the error handling. So we have one, two lines of code. And with two lines of code, you can read an asset uh, from your blockchain. And I think that's really easy to do. And um, also the update. So the update here is the same like the creation process. So you have, you see here, this is a put state and this is also a put state. So in fact, there's no difference between the creation and the update process because um, you, cre you create uh, an asset and uh, the asset uh, has an ID and has a puffer here, and and uh, and that's it. And uh, when you update, then you update also this ID, the asset with this ID, with a new uh, information here. And then you have a new state of this uh, asset, and that's it. And that's and the new state is the new world state, and uh, the new world state is then available in the uh, state database or uh, in level DB or in the, in the couch DB, for example. And that's it. So I think, and that's really easy yeah, to, to see how you can uh, transfer asset here. So, but it's also the same. You have here a boot state and uh, you overwrite the last state of the asset and that's it. So, and this is really easy uh, to use. And also the get all asset method here is, uh, so that's the history of an asset. No, it's not in history, get all assets is, uh, returns, returns all assets from the world state here. So, and, uh, yeah, so it's, I think uh, you have here uh, in, in, the, in the get, here in the get example, and you read example, we will receive only one element here, yeah. And uh, here in this get all assets, so we, we, we receive multiple. So this is another um, function here, get state by range. And then here we can have um, a range. And when we don't use a range, when we leave it a blank, then it means all uh, assets. And uh, here we receive, an, uh, we receive uh, multiple assets. And then we have here um, an, an promise. Here we can promise and with that next, we can uh, have a result here and about this result, we can uh, loop and convert every, um, every line in this, in this array uh, to, uh, yeah, to a record here, left a record and uh, pass this to JSON. And then we can, uh, in this example, it's all pushed to an array, uh, to an object array here in this format. So we have a key uh, with the key in the, in the, in the, in the, from the blockchain and then the record information as a whole um, JSON object here. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So, and you see also a function like uh, get all assets or it's clear here, uh, a range of assets uh, is really easy 
to implement here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, and that's, and that's it for this chain code example. And um, what we have to do now that we can install this. So um, when we look um, into this, uh, so here um, we have to, um, when you copy this, when you clone this favorite examples uh, repository, then you have uh, to install the NPN packages here. And uh, here you see when we do the NPM install, then all these dependencies here, and we say here, these two dependencies, the favorite contract API and this favorite shim uh, NPM packages. So these are dev dependencies, uh, it's only for testing. So we don't need this for our chain code here. Okay. So that means uh, we have to, in our example, we have to NPM install and NPM install and then we can, uh, then all these node modules will be installed and, uh, and loaded. So I have, uh, I did this in the preparation here uh, and, uh, and that's it. So these are, this is the, the same step as we did for the Go installation where we use this vendor folder and the one vendor folder in the Go um, world is also manage also the external dependencies and here the node modules. This is the same uh, uh, for the in, the in the world of Node.js. Okay, so and uh, when we have npm installed, then we can switch back to our test network and uh, we have to configure this uh, environment variable, fabric config path. And this config path uh, must link to the config folder. And uh, the test network has this config folder here. And the important part here is the uh, core YAML file here. So that is the file which the config path, path uh, here needs. So. And you can check this with the env command and to see here and grab. And to see here, this is path. Env is the same like print env. It's the same command. And then we have to package this chain code. It's the first step. So we can, we have this command be a lifecycle chain code package. Yeah. So we say this is the, uh, and the package is and tar, and tar package, a zipped tar package. And uh, this is the outcome, this is the result. And here is with the path option, this is the path to our file from this current location uh, here. And then, so we can do this. Something is wrong. Ah, no. So this is the command. And this is the, uh, the flag, so which I have mentioned earlier. So uh, we have to say this is no cheers and uh, we do that with this lang option here. And this is what, when we use Go, this is the default language, we don't have to set. But when we use another language, when we use Java or uh, JavaScript here, then Node.js here, then we have to use this flag. And the label is uh, the same, like every time here. Okay, so then we should have here a basic tar file here. And um, yeah, that we can, so uh, to work with the test network, we need also to set some environment variables. And the test network uh, gives us a script, it's called uh, envvar, and you find this under the scripts uh, folder. And we can uh, 
use this. And with this, uh, when, we, when we use the script, then we have the possibility to use a function set globals. And uh, with globals uh, one, we can switch or set all environment variables which are needed for organization one in this test network. And when we say set globals two, then we switch to uh, the organization two and we use in both uh, versions the PSC rule. So when we switch to, then we're using organization one and then we can install this with be a life cycle chain code installed and then this tar package so we can install it. This takes some seconds. And you see here, so payload and we have um, identifier here. And the same for organization two. So we can, uh, we can switch to organization two and then we install uh, the chain code also on the peer null, peer zero organization two. Okay, then let us switch back to organization one. And then we have the possibility to check. So for the approve process here, approve from org, we need the package ID. So this package ID. And um, this package ID is uh, this one here, yeah, this one. And uh, we can query this also. So with this query installed uh, command, and when we do this, and we see here, uh, we can query the peer uh, zero on organization one, and we see uh, these chain codes are installed here. Yeah. So, because we can install different chain codes uh, on this peer on, on this channel. And um, yeah, so, and we need this, is this identifier. So you see, this is the same identifier, okay. And we export this so we can use it a little bit easier. And then we have to approve this. Approve for organization one. Uh, this is all the same as we have seen in the, in the examples uh, before. So um, yeah, so, but here important the package ID. So we need this particular package ID. And we have here the sequence one because this is the first, the first um, write for this chain code and uh, the and version one, for example. So, but when we upgrade, for example, then we have to increase this number here. So, yeah, but it could also be the version one, this chain code, because this is only for you. This is a naming convention uh, for the human uh, and not for the, for the blockchain. And the sequence number is for the blockchain. So when we install an upgrade, then we have to here also to uh, increase this number. And this version could also not, could also be version one because maybe we have an uh, an error in our chain code and uh, in our process we are we have version one point one or one point zero and uh, from from this chain code and uh, we have to increase the sequence number on every change on this chain code. So that's the re that's the reason why this number can differ to this number here. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, we have a valid here. And then we can switch to organization two. So, and then we do the same. And this is not a different to the Go chain code or to the Java chain code, yeah? This is always the same. And then, uh, we can use the commit command. And we have here two valids. That looks good. And here we can see uh, if this, there's another command, it's called query committed. And then we see uh, what is the result of the approved process here. And you see here, 
the approvals and you see, okay, organization one MSP, membership service provider uh, has approved this and organization two membership provider has also here true. That means this organization has also approved this chain code. But this, it could, there could be a situation where if you have three organizations, for example, and uh, you have the, the, the uh, chain code lifecycle endorsement uh, or the chain code lifecycle policy, um, the default policy, and the default policy says the majority must approve a chain code, then there, there could be a situation where, where two organizations has, uh, has improved this chain code, but the third organization not, and uh, you can own, but they can also install this uh, chain code uh, in the network. But you can change this yeah, with your lifecycle endorsement policies, and you can say, okay, only uh, only all three members has or have to improve uh, have to approve this chain code. But in the default configuration, it's the majority and. Uh, Two uh, or three are the majority. So, and that's the and that's the command where you can check how your organization has uh, voted on this uh, chain code, for example. Okay, and uh, that's it. Uh, the chain code is installed. And uh, the only difference between the standard way with Go is here. So. Uh, when we package the chain code, we have to say language node. The rest here is always the same. And uh, of course you have to write the chain code in Node.js in JavaScript. And then you have uh, npm install to do the npm install uh, that you can uh, have the uh, fabric contract API npm packages or this shim package. And that's all. But this process is the same uh, like in Go. When you use Go, then you also have to use the Go vendor uh, to load the dependencies. And here we also have to install the dependencies. So it's the same, uh, but uh, it's done a little bit different because of the different uh, uh, languages here. And but the difference here, this is new. So you have to set language node or language Java. Uh, that you can use uh, this uh, correct. And the rest, and the rest is the same uh, as you install every other chain code. Okay, so then we have this running. So, and you see this, and you see here, you have here the chain code containers. Yeah? And now you have uh, some JavaScript or Node.js chain code containers run. And then you can inter start interact with this. And uh, so, okay, so, okay, so here I have a, a test command. So we can test it with the CLI, with the uh, command line. So we can, the first uh, is that we have to init the ledger. So our ledger doesn't have any uh, information now. And when we remember, to this here, oops, up here. So and now we have to call the init ledger function. And the init ledger function defines here some assets. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there is a simple loop, a for loop, yeah, uh, over this over this uh, assets array here. And uh, with the with the put state function, the asset will be created in the in the blockchain. And this is the step we have to uh, do first. This command is a little bit long because we have here uh, to set. Uh, you see here. Um, do, 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 do. Yes. So on the peers, we have here localhost, the first localhost here. So we have the localhost from um, peer zero, organization one, yeah. And the TLS uh, from this organization, from this peer here. 
And then you have the, uh, the peer address from the second peer here, localhost 1951, and also the TLS uh, the TLS uh, root certificate here, the path to the root certificate. So, and uh, that's important that because this is this majority rule. So when we have two, then we need the majority and only one has not the majority to invoke uh, an, an, uh, an chain code uh, command here. So, and that's the reason why we have to use here in when we use the CLI command, uh, all these two uh, peers. But when we use it with the Node.js, then we don't have to do this. So we don't uh, have to, because Node.js, the Node.js SDK will know how many peers uh, the, the system needs to call this function. Okay, let us try this. And uh, that's it. So, but we can Docker compose. So, um, we use this logs and follow. So, and so you can you can see the logs here, and uh, yeah, you see here validated block six. Yeah. Okay, so, and then you can query, for example, okay. Okay, so, and then we switch here to the second terminal. Okay, now I will only, so let me check this. Okay. And now you see uh, there's an error, config file not found, yeah, favorite config path. And that's the config path here, so, yeah. So that's the reason why we have to set this config path here. So, and then, ah, okay. Uh, we need, uh, of course, we need uh, the um, this environment and then, we have to set some environment variables. So we say we are from the organization one and then we, have, we can query this. And you see here, uh, we can use here when you do this, then you have this as a string uh, in your side. And then we, we can pipe this and you use the JQ tool, yeah? the JavaScript parser for the command line then you have a nice output here. And you see all the assets we have created. Yeah, so, and then you can create also one asset and so on. So, uh, yeah, so asset one, asset two, so. And uh, now this works. So now we, we, we can say that we have used the uh, Node.js, um, as a chain code, we have installed this chain code and now we have tested this chain code in the same way uh, as we have did it in the past with the Go language, for example, with the Go chain code. And here you can also for the, when update an asset, yeah, you can try it, so. Um, yeah, so, but this we will skip. And now we try this with, no, with the Node.js and uh, for this, I have created a new folder, my app. And uh, this is basically a copy and paste from the official, uh, from the official example, but I have a little bit modified this so that we can understand it a little bit easier. So, application. So here, this application JavaScript folder, and this is the application here. So, and uh, here you find all the information you need to 
do this. But it's a little bit uh, difficult to understand how this works together. And uh, yeah, so, but you can see here all the uh, yeah, queries uh, and, all, and all queries are related to this uh, basic transfer example. And you can try it and also the, the enrollment process, register and enroll uh, for a user, uh, enroll the admin and so on. Also the chain code and so on. But that's a little bit uh, difficult to understand. And that's the reason why I have uh, changed this a little bit. And I've created uh, another example. This is my app here. And I have divided this, this example in three uh, files. And I have here a helper file, which has here three functions, which we need. So we need this uh, build connection profile. So that is the function. Uh, which reads the connection profile, which is created to the to the start process of the network script, and uh, that's also an advantage from the network script. This creates this for you and JSON uh, connection profile or a YAML connection profile in the JSON format or in the YAML format for this uh, for organization one and for organization two, and with this script. Um, we read the script from this file location here and uh, pass it as a JSON object and uh, uh, returns it to uh, to the usage here. Yeah. So that's and uh, the connection profile uh, contains all the information uh, about our organization one, and we can print it out uh, later and then see we will see what is in this connection profile. And uh, yeah, so, and in this here, we have the build, a build wallet function. So we need this build wallet function uh, for the enrollment process of the administrator and the user, and also for the uh, ledger actions here. And then a small functions, uh, the pretty JSON string, so uh, that you can uh, stringify the return string to a, a JSON object here. So. And we have here three functions. And uh, the first step is that we have to, uh, we need some identities. And uh, to create the identities, uh, we need uh, an admin user. And uh, when we start, when this fabric share is started, then the admin user has a default password. Uh, in, in this case is the user admin, and this is admin password. So when you look into the Docker compose file, uh, there is a, a separate compose file for, for the certified authorities, and there the, uh, the, 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 the username and the password uh, is set. And this is the default name for this. And uh, here we need the wallet path. And then uh, we have here uh, some functions. The, Build certified authority client. We need the client, and then one function for the in admin enrollment, and uh, one function for the user enrollment here. So that user. So and uh, so let us try this. So. And uh, one important part, uh, we need some dependencies. We need uh, the this favorite CR client dependency and we need the favorite network dependency here. And uh, so we can, so we can uh, remove this. And then we can say, okay, the first step is do an NPM install and then these two um, Node.js models will be installed. And okay. 
this you can find this also here. So with the npm init, we create an, 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 a node project uh, and here the npm install the shooter. So, and then we have three files, this helper uh, file, this CR actions and the ledger action, action here. This is the, these three files here. And uh, the first step is that we need to uh, here a wallet. So uh, this is a uh, uh, this is the the wallet path here. And in this in this folder, the identities from from your users uh, are stored. So and if, uh, and uh, we need the admin identity to register users and to enroll new users. And that's the reason why we first uh, has to use this uh, this script. So with node on CA, CA actions uh, admin. I hope this works. Ooh, this is not good. Okay, so I think we have a small problem here. So um, why is this not working? Not at the center of the path. It's not definite. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is a plan. That's a small error. So this is my helper script. And uh, so this was because of a small refactory. And here the same big wallet. So, okay, now it works. So this is a problem from the uh, refactoring. And uh, so, and now you see here a new file, admin ID. And when we look a little bit into this file, and you see here the information. So, so and we see here the certificate from this admin, from this user, the private key from this user, membership service provider, and the type. And the type is always this format. This is X509. So, Fabric CA and Fabric, uh, this is the only type which is accepted here. And um, okay, so, and in this CI action uh, file, um, I have uh, two functions this get, get admin function, and then the get user function here. And uh, yeah, this is a small uh, command here. So I pass the name here, admin, the modus, you can say it is a modus here. And then I call, uh, I can um, read this with the process and arc variable here. And then we have here on the second, in the second uh, position of this array, uh, the arguments here, the second argument here, this is the second argument. And then uh, if it's admin, then I call the get admin function. And then if it's user, then I call this get user function here with the name on the position three. So, and that's the reason why I, we say here, uh, CI actions, user and uh, beta. So we need the user beta, for example, uh, Roland. Okay, so, and this get admin function, you have it here. So, and this is here when you see this connection profile, we call this, we need the connection profile, and then we need the uh, CR client. And this CR client is also this, uh, is this build CR client function, which we have seen earlier. 
and we need this uh, NBN package here, Ferrix CR client, and the connection profile and the name of the certified authority. And this is organization one. And then here we have this build wallet function, which I have uh, uh, split it in the build in the helper in the helper file. And it needs also two, uh, two parameters, the wallet and uh, the wallet path. You know? And then we can use this enrollment um, function here. And with this enrollment function, we have here the, um, we have it here. And you see here, this is the main function for in, to enroll an admin user. And uh, yeah. And then here we see that uh, here's the enrollment. And uh, that's important to know. So the admin user is already registered. So this is registered when the Fabric here is started. And uh, then we only have to enroll, enroll it here. In the normal user, we have first to uh, register the user. It's here. So this is the, and then we can enroll it. So, and we have first to register a user in this certified authority, and then we can enroll this user and convert this user uh, to this wallet identity and put this identity in this wallet here. And that's the second part we have to do. So. The first, uh, the next step is that we use this function uh, to, call, to call this function here. So this get user function, we say we want the user uh, Roland. And now we have a um, second identity in our wallet. And you see here this Roland ID. And here, when you look into that, oops, then you see here the same. Now we have the certificate information here, yeah, and we have his private key to sign uh, the request and the membership service provider. And uh, yeah, and this is the first step in the preparation. So uh, or the, 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 the two first steps. So we need this um, connection profile or the preparation of this connection profile. And we need two users, the admin user and also an application user. And then we are ready to write our application. And uh, this is Roland now. And uh, to write the application, I did uh, the same. I did the same. So I created here um, a, a script and uh, we have, I have implemented here one, two, three functions. They get all asset function, read an asset function and uh, create another asset here. And uh, this works in the same way. So, um, because we, we need here the helper function with this to read the connection profile. Then we need the information from the wallet, yeah. also from the helper function. And then we need a gateway. So here we create the a new instance of this, of the gateway object. So here, this comes from the fabric network. So here, this is the wallet, which we have used also in the CR, CA example, and we need the gateway from this. And here's the wallet path. So yeah, the wallet path yeah, is in the same folder and this is the name of the folder. And uh, these some constants here um, are the name of the user. And the user is the name of the identity. And then 
information about the channel, which channel we are going to query and which chain code we are going to query here. And then we have to make a connection and that's pretty easy. So there's this connect function comes from the gateway here, from the gateway. And uh, we need the connection profile, the information about the wallet, then which identity we should use. And then the information, how the network, how the SDK should discover uh, the network. And uh, with the discovery true, uh, then everything is, uh, uh, is done automatically. So the, this, then uh, the Node.js SDK will use uh, the gossip protocol and we will discover all the informations in your network. And the only thing what we need in the connection profile is the path to one peer. So, and then the SDK connects to this particular peer and then collects all the information about the network. And uh, yeah, and as localhost, uh, that means only the flag is when we use this as localhost. And this is this is the connection. So, and I think that's also I think to enroll and register users that's a little bit complicated because you have to um, to look what is needed and how you can uh, query the CA and uh, uh, and uh, register and enroll in user. Yeah, so that's the reason why I have split this in a separate file that we have this in another uh, scope. And uh, then when we have this information in place, then we need only less things to connect to the network. So we need this connection profile information. So this is stored here in this CCP connection profile. Then we need, uh, okay, where is the wallet located? Because in this wallet is my identity. Then we need a, a gateway object. Yeah. And this gateway object uh, makes the connection. So, and this is the same process as you uh, do it when you use a database, for example. Then you need also a username, a password, the host, a uh, database name, for example. And that's similar, the same information. So the connection profile is where is your host information? Yeah. The wallet is the place where is your uh, in, where, where your identity is stored, and then what is the username? What is the identity? And uh, of course, we have no password here because we use here the um, RSA uh, component, co components, the certificate and the private key from this user, so we don't need any uh, password here. And the discovery here is only how the SDK can find the information about the network. And uh, that's it. Then we have a connection here. And then the next step is, okay, when we are connected to the network, so uh, to the channel, for example, channel uh, to the PS0 from organization one, which channel we would like to connect? And uh, with the get network from the channel, so we say channel one, that's our channel. Then we have a, a, a connection to the channel. And the next information is which chain code we would like to use. And this is done with net, network get contract here and the chain code name. And then we have a contract. And at this point here, we are ready to use uh, our uh, chain code and query the information or create an, create an asset or whatever we want to do in this chain code. And with this contract here, we can use two functions. So in this example, basically uh, you can use this two functions. So one is to evaluate transaction. So that's important because when you use evaluate transaction, then you send your query only to your peer, to a connected peer. And uh, when you use the submit transaction, then you use the order. So, and that's, a diff that's the difference. So the submit transaction will always uh, try to invoke to, and, uh, to invoke the a chain code, the create asset chain code, and uh, is sent to the order and the order uh, does his work and so on. So, but this took, uh, I think so, until two seconds in a normal uh, setup like we use it here. And um, yeah, that's a little bit too slow. 
but you can also use an read asset function yeah, uh, with the submit transaction. That will also work, but it took uh, some time and took two seconds and it's not very efficient. So, and that's the reason why we have two different uh, functions here in the contract uh, class. The evaluate transaction is queries only your local instance and this is pretty fast. So, and uh, when you submit something, when you create an asset, when you update an asset, when you transfer an asset, every time when you change an asset, then you have to use a submit function and this is called submit transaction. And then uh, the process works. So how many, um, how many uh, 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 peers have to improve this transaction. And then the SDK sends a broadcasting to all the peers. And then the peers have to uh, evaluate this transaction, have to simulate this transaction, sends the transaction proposal, proposal back. And when all the transaction proposals are back and uh, the SDK knows, okay, we have the majority, then we need at least uh, two successful uh, transaction proposal. Then, it, then uh, the SDK sends the proposal to the orderer and the orderer does his work. And then if everything is in place, uh, the orderer committed uh, this these, uh, transaction to a block, orders the block and so on. And then follows the typical uh, transaction flow, which is done in the fabric uh, system. And, but you can also, call this read asset with the submit transaction. So this will work, but it took two seconds and because it runs through the whole process. And uh, it's uh, of course better when we use this evaluate transaction function for queries. And that's also when we remember to the CLI uh, example, then we have also the possibility to call invoke or do query. And uh, the query means that it's queried the local peer. And and that's important to understand that here we have a an, an specific query function, which queries the local environment. So the local beer here, for example, beer zero from this organization. And then we have a separate submit transaction. We took some time uh, until everything is in place. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, and when we try this here now, um, So then I have here, yeah, so, and we can, we can call this. Oh, here we go. And you see, and you see here the same result like before, but from the client side. And also when we do um, the read asset function, read asset, asset one. Okay. Asset. okay, then there's an error because this asset, the error handling is not good implemented here. So, and then this can query asset two, three, and so on. And uh, you can also create an asset here. And uh, here we create a new asset, asset 14, uh, with this information. And you see here, then you, you see here the, the information, the log from the, and then we can put this at 14. And you see it works. And yeah, so, and this is how you can use Node.js for your client application. So, um, I think with, with this simple steps here, uh, 
uh, it's very easy to query, uh, to use Node.js as a client for your favorite network. So, and there are only some steps to do. And these steps uh, are similar to maybe a database connection. So, yeah. And the important parts only here. So when we, we can make here a console log, for example, for the CCP. And you see here, this is the connection profile. And you see here for the organization one, the connection profile has some information about the peers. So what is what are the peers? So and what is the IP address and the address of the peers? What is the TLS certificate of the peer? And so on. So and also for the certified authority. But this is only needed if you uh, register and enroll new new users. When you use uh, maybe the user one identity, which is automatically generated from the network script, from the from the build script, from the start script, script, then you only need you don't need this information because you don't need these uh, certified authority actions here, and uh, then you only need this in your connection profile, and uh, and that's all what you need. So um, yeah. But this information uh, will be generated um, in your test network every time new when if this if the system uh, starts here. And I think that's all in the organizations. Hmm, I don't know. Where's the script? Ah, oh, we can look um, helper. It's on the test network organizations, peer organizations, and organization one example. So and here organizations, peer organization, of course, no, organization one. And then you have here these two files. And you can use this as a JSON file or as a YAML file. And when you look into this file, then you see here all the information. Okay. And in this file will be created every time new when you use the uh, the network script. This uh, uh, the, the script to uh, start and stop the network. And if you run your own network, for example, uh, then you have to create, uh, then you have to create A connection profile in this way. Yeah. So I think the structure is is uh, is easy to understand. So the only difficult part is how you can uh, do this. So how you can uh, um, copy the the PEM content in this in this uh, in a single line uh, file, but uh, in I think in the last or in one of my sessions there is a um, uh, a function in my repos uh, where you can see how you can do this. So that's an one liner to do this. It's an uh, I think a set command. So. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the connection profile. So yeah, there's no magic behind this. Then you need the information about your wallet. You need the wallet object and the wallet path. So yeah, and this. And this is this information. Here in this folder, all your identities are stored. Yeah. Then you need the gateway. Okay, this is something an object, and then you have to connect it. And to connect it, you need these informations: the connection profile. So, what is your network? Where is my wallet? Which user want wants to connect? And uh, is it localhost or not? And uh, should I use the discovery service or not? 
and then you have a, uh, a connection. So the await, that's important that you use this await here because that's uh, an asynchronous uh, function and uh, the JavaScript has, has to wait until this, uh, this function is ready. And yeah, and then you need, of course, the channel name and the chain code name, and that's it. And then you have the, the link to the contract. And then when you have the contract, you can do uh, your basic functions. You can query all your, um, all your chain code, all your chain code queries with the evaluate transaction function and the name. And uh, also with the, uh, here with the, with, with the options here. So get all assets uh, doesn't meet any options, but read asset has an option, yeah, because we have defined this, um, yeah, in the in the in the in the chain code, and uh, and then you can call, and that's it. So I think that's easier than the database, uh, than the database query sometimes, and uh, also for the create asset. So when you submit a transaction, then you have to use this function here and send your parameters here and that's it. And then you, you can disconnect from the gateway and uh, that's it. So I think to query and to send a transaction <coughs> is, is a little bit easier um, as uh, to understand what is needed to uh, get the user and to enroll and register, uh, register and to enroll a user here. Yeah. So, but this is an, if this is something you need not so so often, and uh, yeah. But I think it's not so. The important part to know is that uh, when you want to and when you want to create a new user, the first step is always to register this user. Also, when you do it in the with the CLI, yeah, and then you receive a secret um, from this, and then you can enroll it uh, with this secret. So yeah, the user ID and the secret is important. So here, this is an important step here that you uh, store the secret. Uh, and then enroll the user with the secret. And then here you put this into the wallet. So, yeah, and with wallet, uh, it, this is the wallet here. No? And then you have here wallet ID and admin ID and whatever it is. Okay, so I think now we are done with a basic overview how you can use uh, Node.js as a chain code. And I think that's pretty easy uh, um, to do. So especially for a simple or for a standard, uh, for a standard use case. And then um, you can use Node.js also for, your, uh, for the client. And uh, I think it's also not so complicated to do this. So I think it's more complicated to build the REST API around this uh, system. Yeah, and um, yeah, and uh, the certified authority actions, uh, this could be a little bit uh, complicated and uh, difficult, difficult to understand. So. Okay. Are there any questions? What provides the command set globals? Um, this is This is the command set global. So this is the function set globals here. And this function, the only thing 
uh, this function does is to set different environment variables. With, in Fabric, uh, when we use the CLI version, we have to, to define some environment vari variables. So uh, this is the here, the local membership service provider. So that we say, okay, we are someone from organization, we will use organization one. And uh, the ID from organization one is organization one MSP. And this ID is, config, is configured in the config.txyaml file. So that's a simple name and ID from this organization. And then when we use TLS, then we have to define the path to the root certificate. Yeah? And uh, we have to say, okay, we are, uh, what is the peer address? What is the, what are, where is the membership uh, service provider config folder? Yeah, a config user config folder and you say it here and this is from the admin user so this user is is working now in our example so this is here organization one we have a for users folder and this is the admin user and uh, then every user has a membership service provider uh, folder and in this folder are the important credentials for this user and there's another user, as I have mentioned, user one or one example.com, also with a membership service provider folder. Yeah. This, this user identity, we could, all, we could also use for our Node.js example here, but then we, there's also a script uh, um, where we can convert this existing to uh, this wallet. And then here, the, the, the address, the peer address. And that's all. So, and the set globals function um, in this test network, we have uh, normally two um, peers, but there is an extended version where we can extend the network to a second or to a third organization. And, uh, uh, and that's the reason why we have here organization free MSP. And that's the job from the set globals. Um, function here uh, you can do this also uh, without without this function and uh, export these free environment variables uh, if you need it um, any other question Come on, one question. Nobody. Don't be shy. Okay, if, can, ah, can you elaborate on CTX and this method stuff? I was explained very well. Um, can you evaluate on CTX its method? Now that's in, in, in Node.js, it's a little bit difficult because so um, personally, I try to prepare myself for the developer certification and uh, I did my preparation uh, with Go on the uh, on the on the um, on the chain on the chain code side, and um, now I have to switch also to uh, Node.js uh, for that. And uh, I think we have to look about this information. That's not not so easy to uh, explain. Um, so from the that's, uh, we have to, it's not um, open. So, I mean, this 
you mean uh, so i think to understand this uh context and this stop here uh we have to look into the in, not into the fabric contract api uh, uh we have to look into the fabric shim and uh, because that's this is a high level so uh it's very easy to use this and uh when we look into the into the into the favorite shim package, then we will see more about this context and about this stop implementation here. Here we have only uh, the the the, the extents from this contract, and through this contract we have access to this to this uh, context and to this stop here. And uh, yeah, so to evaluate this a little bit more, we have to look into this. Fabric uh, shim package, I think so. Okay, so is there anybody out there who wants to do the developer certification in the near future? Hmm. Cool. So you have to do it also with uh, Node in, in Node.js. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, now it's uh, it's stopped. So when you have enrolled it already, uh, then. Uh, I think the certification process is stopped now. And uh, I received an email uh, last week, ah, this week, I received an email last week. And in this email, um, there was a date, the, the 16th of March, there will be the start uh, of the, of, of the uh, certification. But I don't know if this uh, time is the time where this is open to the public because uh, they have the information, uh, they gave the information that it will test it with the proctors. So maybe this is only for the test, for, for testing for this exam and, uh, and not open for the public, but we will see. Okay. Um, yeah, if no questions, then uh, I have to say thank you. I will publish uh, the slides later um, and also the recording. And uh, then you can, uh, maybe you can try, try to reproduce this example with my script. And uh, if you have any question to the script, uh, then feel free to ask me. And uh, yeah, so that's from my side. Thanks for your attention and your time and stay safe in this time. And uh, yeah, we will see you soon. <laughs>